Hello, ActiSage here on the Sage channel, and as per usual on a Thursday, we have seen an update to Space Engineers. Well, this update actually changes the game a fair bit. Not directly, like a big art overhaul or adding an assortment of enemies that constantly come at you, no. More as in, there's something now, if you're playing survival and you really want a challenge, there's a bit more of a challenge there. Instead of just dealing with capturing ships and all that, or oxygenating your rooms if you want to, now if you look at the bottom left part portion of the screen, you'll notice that we have oxygen there. And just like energy, it is slowly depleting. In fact, they seem to be roughly one to one. It's been my experience yet, there we go. The oxygen actually depletes a bit quicker than your energy. Now, what happens here if we run out of oxygen? Well, let's first off go ahead and make sure I actually own this place. That way I have a nice place to respawn. Oh, yet, you stupid piece of shit. As I was saying, now that we've disabled the turret, let's go ahead and make sure we have ownership of this. That way I have somewhere to respawn. And I'm going to just wait about and my oxygen will drop down. And as I run about and jump, it doesn't really... Well, actually, no, let's see. Is it ticking down any quicker? So you can see it dropping. It just went by, and then by 0.2. It's going down by 0.2 as I'm running about holding shift. And let's hold still. And it's going down by 0.1. So oxygen consumption is all... No, it's still going down by 0.2 actually looking at it now. It seems to vary. It's a bit odd like that. But anyway, let's just go ahead and let this run down. That way you can see what happens when you run out of oxygen. Alrighty, well after what felt like an incredibly long time of jumping about and accidentally falling off a rock once, at least, my oxygen has finally dropped down to a very low point. There, you didn't even see it dropping pretty quick actually. Seems like it seems like it drops at two speeds, one when you're running around and one when you're just sitting. In fact, if you're sitting still, it'll actually drop slower than your energy level. And this energy is used up when you're using tools or having your jetpack on. So if you're just sitting about, energy is actually just going to be used up from sitting about, but oxygen will as well. But of course, oxygen will be low, used up at a slow rate if you're sitting still. Now, if you run out of oxygen like I'm about to here, you'll notice that my health will start dropping very, very rapidly. Here we go, point eight. 0 0.7, 0 0.5, still actually dropping at what appears to be the high rate. Maybe I got a little confused. It does seem to drop. Yep, there we go. And I'm losing health, even though it says I have 0 0.2. Now you have a multitude of options. First one is this one right here, which is get yourself whew, into an oxygen. Why is my health still dropping? What? There's air in here. Oh, I have my helmet on. So yeah, you have a few options. First one is don't run into a room like that if you don't have a medical room in there to take your helmet off. You need to actually be able to take your helmet off, because I ran into that room, but my suit doesn't have an automatic fill function, so what I did there was, well, basically ran into a room full of oxygen and suffocated inside my own suit. So if somebody found me, they're like, this guy died of oxygen, and they pop my suit open, the air would flow into it real quick, basically, when they went to do their autopsy. So a little unfortunate there. Now this does give us a chance because I did expire to look at this thing here. And you can see that besides the medical rooms now, it says owner is, oh, it says um, owner slash timeout. It's saying nobody. It's not showing a timeout here, but what it is showing is, well, it's showing a timeout for these escape pod things, but not for medical rooms. You don't really have one, but it is showing the oxygen amount. That's what the O2 means. And 100%, 100% and zero. Meaning if I spawn at this place, that's the place outside I respawn right here. Of course, I actually have O2 in my suit because now if you have your medical bay hooked up to an O2 system, so we got these big air containers here and all this stuff. And by the way, this is your normal respawn world, EC Start 2. They've gone ahead and rejigged all the buildings. I've added in a few other things like that, that ship up there, that thing. But they've actually rejigged all the starting ships and stuff to have oxygen used. But if you do have O2 piped into your respawn bay, you'll actually respawn with O2 in your system. Now, theoretically, if we go ahead now and chop this off, so there we go, this no longer has a pipe transferring O2 into it, and we were to expire, there we go, upon respawning at that point, we should theoretically spawn with a suit without any O2. Strangely enough, we actually did spawn with a suit with O2. But you see this, I go up to it and press T to try to regain oxygen and energy. Doesn't work anymore because that pipe is severed. So if you were to go ahead and take this stuff and repair that pipe. So there we go, we've repaired that pipe. And you see option two for restoring oxygen instead of running to an oxygenated environment and taking off your helmet 
is just go up to one of these and press T on that right there and hold it. And you see my O2 has gone back up to full and I can do that again. It'll keep going up. Now, it is fairly strange that I respawn without O2, but I get the feeling the devs have probably done, or, or that I respawn with O2, I should say. But I get the feeling the devs have probably done that because I can guarantee there's no O2 in there now. They've probably done that just to ensure that you're not in a constant death loop. So if you do run out of O2, you die, but you still have a chance to respawn and have a chance. Now, mind you, of course, if you're respawning without a helmet on, you're going to be in trouble. But of course, you're out of med bay, luckily, so you should be able to run to that pretty quick and get your helmet back on. There we go. Now, of course, there we go. Get that fixed up. Now, there's a few other options, actually, besides just taking off your helmet or running up to this. You can actually hop in a cockpit, too. Now, mind you, if you just hop in a chair like this, now, this is what you would expect to restore your energy. It's not going to restore your O2, unless, of course, you're inside a pressurized environment. Then it should work at restoring your O2. Of course, law only if you have your helmet off. But you can hop in other things like these over here. Here, now these are cockpits. Of course, this is your box standard cockpit. I've turned it upside down because now at the bottom, you can see there's a place to connect the connectors or conveyors, pardon, into, and that'll actually feed oxygen into there. So if we were to hop into this right now, you can see at the bottom left, our oxygen is still dropping. But if we had this properly piped up, the oxygen levels would actually go up and it would keep us oxygenated. The little version as well, you can see they've now stuck two little connecting points in here, which is pretty cool. You can actually go ahead and press K on these, it looks like and it'll actually allow you to access the whole conveyor system, which is pretty cool. And then they have a large one on the bottom, so you have two different options to set that one up. And then the fighter cockpit version, they got a big one at the back and a small one at the front. So again, you have multiple options on how to set it up. I don't believe there's any on the bottom of that one. Uh, actually, nope, looks like there's one right there, so you can even hook it up right there. It's pretty cool. So you can go ahead and have a ship that'll keep you oxygenated. Now, they've also gone ahead and skipping over these little balls right here, they've added some other little things. Now, I'm not sure if this was in the previous update, but these little conveyor pipes, the conveyor sorters, they got the ones for small ships. They actually have two versions of them now, pretty cool. But what they've also done is added these wonderful machines right here. They got your oxygen storage tank, which is now available on small ship and an oxygen manufacturing thingamajiggity right here as well. And they have an assortment of different connection pipes. Unfortunately, you cannot go up and press K on all these. You can on the back there, but the small ones at the front looks like you can actually aim at them and connect. A little unfortunate, but they do actually connect if you put pipes into them. So pretty damn cool models. Now to show those up or off, we're going to go up to this big ship up here, the Oxygen Trader. Now this is a huge flotilla ship that I've put, the, I say huge flotilla ship, it's a small ship that I've put together that the idea would be it would go from point A to point B and sell its oxygen. And basically what it has is a huge amount of these oxygen tanks at the top, running all along here and along the bottom mirrored, and then oxygen generators here along the sides, and I have all these full of ice. And then the back here is just the idea that we could store more ice in there, and then we have a docking port here. Now you could be in your big ship and just have oxygen tanks, and you could come up to this and connect, and it will actually transfer oxygen from this other ship into there. Or let's say this ship didn't have any oxygen generators, it just had oxygen tanks, you could fill it up as well. So you can transfer oxygen similar to how you transfer energy through batteries. I thought that was pretty damn cool that they have that all set up. And mind you, all this is all piped up with big pipes below it, but you could be using these smaller pipes and hooking them into these ports here to keep it all hooked up and working properly. It's pretty damn cool. Other ways to keep your oxygen up, besides just having air tanks and stuff on the ship, they actually have gone ahead and went through these little ships and reworked them, as I said earlier, and I believe they did each of them in a different way. Now this one, I can't quite find it out. Ah, yes, this one uses those oxygen tanks. So if we were to look over here when we first spawned, I have these oxygen tanks here at the ground. Now, these empty ones aren't very useful, but what we can do is go up to a oxygen generator and plop it inside there and you'll be able to see that it's gone ahead and moved it over a slot as it's eaten up the ice that was in there and it's gone ahead and made and it filled it with as much oxygen as it could so 87 percent now we could go ahead and take that one out and i believe it's over here go, there we go and place it into an oxygen tank now, unfortunately, the oxygen tank, I believe, isn't set to fill these yet. Well, we can switch that around easily enough by going to our control panel. We can find that oxygen generator. So let's go ahead. There we go. And the oxygen generator that we originally had in, you see at the very bottom there, there's a re auto refill option. When that's toggled on, any air tanks you put into the system 
anywhere, like in a, just in a random storage container. Well, just like ore is automatically pulled to a refinery, the oxygen tanks will automatically be pulled to this machine when the auto refill is turned on and they will be filled up. Now, if we have that off, but we have auto refill turned on on a tank, theoretically, we should be able to, it'll do the same thing. So we have a O2 tank and O2 tank two. We're gonna go ahead and go to O2 tank one and turn on auto refill. And now theoretically it should pull it out of auto uh, out of tank one and put it into tank two. It booted me out there. I didn't close that. Hmm. Bit strange. It doesn't appear to be, but what we can do is go ahead and put it into oxygen tank two as soon as I can find it. Oh dearie, dearie, dearie. Oxygen. There we go. So oxygen tank two, we put it in there and it should automatically refill that now. We did turn on, no, we turned it on oxygen tank one, didn't we? So there we go. There we go, and it did fill it up, so there we go. Now that we have that in our inventory, you'll notice at the bottom left, our oxygen, oxygen is still dropping. Don't panic. What this actually works at is, once the oxygen in your suit, which is what that number at the bottom left means, reaches 30%, then it pulls O2 out of that tank, and it uses up about 42% of the tank's oxygen when it does that, and it'll bring you back up to 100% oxygen right away, so it's pretty damn cool. And so you'll basically get two and a bit uses out of that oxygen tank. What you, you can do is also fly up here to one of these ships, and if we could find an access port, what you can do, and what they have done with this ship, is they actually have a storage container in here, I believe, that they, oh, that, that's not full, but what they can do is you can put a oxygen tank just into any storage container or a connector and as long as it's hooked up to the cockpit when your O2 in here drops and you see right there actually the O2 and energy has gone up since this ship has energy it's fueled it back up and since we did put an O2 canister in this ship it's used that O2 canister to go ahead and fill up our oxygen at the bottom left which is pretty damn cool and let's go ahead and I don't think yeah this just has a connector I don't think this has a generator no no, this ship is just using the oxygen tank, I believe. I'm just double checking. Yeah, it's weird that this hasn't dropped. I guess it was such a small percent because we were only down a little bit. But yeah, it looks like that's what it's pulling it from. Weird though to me that it hasn't changed its percentage. Anyway, that's pretty cool. Well, you, they also have here are just a ship that doesn't actually have any oxygen storage in it, but it has an oxygen generator right here. So you can just stockpile ice in there and it'll use up the ice as, it, as needed to go ahead and put air into the cockpit when you're sitting in it. So we can hop in there and once again, our oxygen at the bottom left is filled up. And I believe in here, if we go ahead and find generator, there you go. You see it's very slowly using up the ice that's in there as it's keeping us aerated. And then this is just an air tank here that the devs have gone ahead and stuck into one of these. That'll just go ahead and be using up the air tank. And I guess the best way to see an oxygen tank slowly depleting would be, yes, go to it here and you can see it's at 99.80%. Unfortunately, I don't think that refreshes until you click on something else in the back. Yeah, there we go. Now it's 996 3%. Pretty cool stuff. And let's go ahead and get out of here. Now, when you're inside an oxygenated environment, like we're about to go into here on this large ship, so let's land, get popped through these doors. There we go. And there we go. You can see at the bottom right it says now high, so we're in an oxygenated environment. Pretty cool. Now we can go ahead and take off our helmet. Now, unfortunately, as far as I know, there's still no quick way to do it. I think they're going to rework the character. I really do, or I hope they do. And at that point, I think it'll just be a button press or actually an inventory item you take on and off to take your helmet on and off. But right now, unfortunately, the only way to take your helmet off is to find a bloody med bay and go ahead and switch your skin to the one without a helmet. And now you can see at the very bottom left, for some reason, it's saying oxygen zero. I guess that's because it's saying, hey, look, there's no oxygen at all in your suit. Now, mind you, the oxygen at the far bottom right says hi because there's oxygen in this room, so that's the reason we're not dying. Now, remember what I did originally as I ran into that room without any oxygen in my suit, so let's put this back in, and there we go. Because we've changed suits, it's now filled our oxygen back up to full, so that's another way to fill the oxygen back up. And I think... I don't even think that way actually uses up oxygen from your main oxygen supply, but it might use it up from the room, so it's a little hard to tell. Now, mind you, with the suit off, so if I go ahead and take that off again, you'll notice that your energy levels will not actually drop as quickly as they usually would. Like I said earlier, when you're just sitting around outside, your energy levels and your oxygen levels both drop. In fact, energy a bit quicker than oxygen. Well, now, without your helmet on, your energy levels will not actually drop, well, nearly as quick. As you can see, they're 
they're just barely dropping very very slowly dropping 90 it's wow yeah they're barely dropping at all it almost feels like so you can go ahead and pressurize your work areas and run around without a helmet on and not have to really worry about using up oxygen at all now mind you energy at this current point is more easily replenished so you might be saying well i think i'd rather just well i'm going to be using oxygen either way if you're playing like that because this is an option you can turn it on and off in the options of your world but if you decide to have it on, you might as well actually be using the oxygen and save yourself a bit of energy. It is unfortunate that oxygen is not more easily replenished because, of course, solar energy, you can theoretically run your whole base off of solar and never have to worry about going and mining. Whereas oxygen, you're going to need to go ahead and find ice to keep your oxygen factories running and keep your tanks all surplus. And by the way, if you didn't know, there's little vents here. For some reason in this room, they seem to have that one outputting and this one inputting. I don't really know why. Oh, and be careful for the love of God if you come out to the bridge. Most of the ship doors are now double doors, except for the bridge door, which instantly goes ahead and depressurizes the whole room and my character is now dying. Please repressurize, please repressurize. Thank you. Woo, scary. Yeah, got a bit carried away with that. Uh, I sort of lost my train of thought. Sorry there. But anyway, I think that's the majority of that oxygen stuff. Just be cautious. I enjoy it. I love it. Um, as I was saying about oxygen not being a replenishable supply, I suspect in the future, hopefully, since they added O2, we might see food, which means you might have a green grove area, and you might be able to have just needing magnesium or fertilizer to keep that area well enough stocked and then you'll actually be able to get oxygen maybe from your green growing areas who knows don't know for sure anyway there's one last thing to show in this update oh and by the way obviously as i showed earlier that large cockpit does have a vent on the bottom but one last thing to show and that would be these things here these are well bouncy balls basically so if you were to go ahead and look into this one here there we go. You can see it's got a bunch of little settings here, so you can actually change its mass to be pretty damn heavy. You can change its friction so it can be won't roll on stuff so easily. Restitution, which I'm not actually sure what the heck that means. But you can also turn on broadcasting. These things actually usually broadcast. So as I fly out, you can see it has a decent broadcasting range. Now this one is probably being relayed through the, all the antennas here they don't usually broadcast at this distance i don't believe but they do broadcast a little bit and when you first build them they actually do broadcast which is a bit strange and the strangest thing it is i'm in survival mode right now and this thing is broadcasting which means it doesn't use power it is the strangest little thing out there right now and in fact we can see it doesn't use your it just use gravity generator components and a few other things to bake so I don't know, it uses quite a few steel tubes on the big version, the small version, not so much. But it's a strange, strange thing, and it's so odd to me that it doesn't use power. And this one's wiggling because I guess landing gears are dangerous. It does also, of course, have build states and stuff like that. Oh, and my inventory was... Uh, oops, I destroyed a gravity generator. And here's the large version, same sort of settings. You can up its... There we go. It's virtual mass, it's friction and all that. And to show these things off because they do bounce and all that stuff, I've gone ahead and filled that thing up there full of them. And I'm gonna remote control it, open it and drop everything out of it. But to do that, I first have to reload the world because simulation speed drops like crazy. And so I actually have a separate world where that's full. I've ruined the magic slightly, but I feel like I should have said that. Anyway, here we go. Okay, well, I've waited about uh, 15, going on 20 minutes-ish for this uh, world I built with a bunch of those bouncy balls to load. And, uh, yeah, they, they don't want to function. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just leave you with this little tiny bit of laggy footage that I recorded earlier when I was setting it up. So you can imagine what it would have been so wonderful if loading up a world with so many physics objects hadn't failed miserably. You that 64 bit nonsense, please. Ah, anyway guys, that's it right there. You're, you're seeing it. Um, yeah. Anyway guys, that's it for this update. I think I've covered pretty much everything. I hope this was informative and entertaining. And if it wasn't, I'm very sorry. Anyway guys, no matter what, thanks a bunch for watching. And I shall see you guys next time. Ta-ta.